Welcome back to this Friday, June 23rd edition of the Sports Mix on Talk Radio WRNR and TV 10. Spencer and Colin, happy to have you with us. We're now joined in studio by legendary Hedgesville basketball coach Kelly Church. How you doing today, Kelly? I'm doing great. Thanks. Thank you guys for having me again. Yeah, funny, uh, <laughs> funny you're sitting in that seat like a little over 24 hours after you're on with Rob's show yesterday. Uh, but uh, your your main kind of reason you're here is you want to promote the, your camp that you're that you're putting on this summer again. Right. It's a uh, it's it's through Parks and Recreation, which makes it a little bit different. Uh, we did it we did it last year, and <clears throat> to be honest, I don't think I did a great job of of making sure that that people knew it's 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 obviously very similar to the camp we have at Hedgesville um and like I'm fortunate enough to been I've been doing this now for forever it seems like uh like I've been doing basketball camps the first time I worked University of Richmond's basketball camp was 1985 so my guess is neither one of you guys were alive uh, so <laughs> your guess uh, is correct yeah so um and that's the first basketball camp I worked and then I used to go uh, you know camp to camp to camp all over the east coast trying to develop relationships and uh you know which have been great throughout my life and uh, i think i've become pretty good at the at the camp thing i do it a little bit differently we don't just make it about basketball but we we tie in you know lots of life lessons and uh like our camp at hedgesville this year we had over 125 kids which was great wow. um you know for especially for a little you know a small local camp so uh, next week i actually uh, i'll take a vac next week i'm in town and we're, we're practicing one more week and then i'll uh, take a vacation with my with my wife and i'll follow that up with uh like i run university of richmond's uh mini spider camp so i run their little kid camp and you know that'll be about 350 kids so uh you know it's packed every year and um yeah so for, very fortunate to get to spend time uh th this year the one at the rec center is the july 17th through the 20th so after i get back from richmond's camp uh, you know it's at night which when we do our camp it's 9 to 12 during the day this camp's actually at night so uh you know it gives people who who have to have daycare and work and stuff a different opportunity and they're more than welcome to stay and watch what we do uh it's broken up into two age groups and if you go on the berkeley county website or sorry the the berkeley county parks and recreation website you can find it there or on my facebook page how much does it uh, cost, and is there any restrictions on the amount of kids to, or a deadline, yeah, I guess, for yeah. Well, I, to, I'm, to be honest, I don't, I don't know the deadline, uh, but it's it's sixty five dollars per kid, uh, and it's. Um, it's broken up into two age groups, first through third grade, and then fourth through seventh grade. So, uh, you know, those are the only restrictions. And there is a restricted number. And so, like at ours, like at Hedgesville, we have two gyms, two big gyms. Uh, and, and so we were able to accommodate all the kids. Uh, you know, but the, the numbers are, are, you know, they have a cutoff. I think it's right below 50 that they'll, they'll cut it at. So if you, if you want to do it, I would encourage you to sign up as soon as possible. And, uh, you know, looking back at your season this year, what, what are some takeaways that you take away from, uh, you know, heading down, back down to the state tournament this year and the team that you had this year? Well, uh, you know, I, obviously we, we, we had a really, really good year. And when I say we had a good year, we, we uh, at the end, all the kids that wanted to ha or had aspirations of, of continuing their, their career could go on the, uh, to play college basketball if they wanted to. And uh, Stefan and uh, Cam are both going to play uh, at Potomac State. Uh, we had some other kids who had some opportunities. And, yeah, they chose not to. And, uh, you know, uh, your kids got to make life choices. I tell them all the time, like, I, I if, if you want to play college basketball, you better want to do it for yourself. I mean, it's a big part of it. Now, everybody talks about, you know, oh, I, I want to be a college athlete. I want to play college basketball. And I, I tell lots of them, like, based on what I've seen, you don't. Like, you just don't because it, it really is a job. I mean, it's full time and, and you have to almost, you know, uh, you know, not just like the sport or even love the sport. You almost got to be obsessed with it if you're going to do it. Certainly, certainly at the Division Two or Division One level. So, uh, you know, that was really good. And the biggest thing, like always, I mean, all of our kids graduated on time with their class. So that's that's 25 years at Edgeville, 30 years that I've been coaching. And every kid graduates on time with their class if they're a senior basketball player. So, uh, you know, in terms of the, the, you know, we lost all the kids that played uh, most of the minutes with the exception of Tay. So, you know, well, what's Hedgesville going to be like? Well, I, I 
my prediction is we'll be a lot better than people think we'll be. Uh, and that's without any help from the portal. <laughs> you know, uh, we just we have the kids that are there and they're they're working extremely hard. And so, you know, we'll find a way to become competitive, uh, you know, through developing our talent and getting the kids to work together. I want to talk, have you talk about a player that uh, I've ha- I think I've asked every coach that he's played for. Uh, and he this year he made it to the playoffs in all three sports. That being Jackson or West, he he you said he had aspirations at one point to play college basketball, but it looks like he's going to play college baseball. I believe from what I've talked to him. What did he mean to your program? Because you know from everything that I've seen that I saw this last year, he seemed to be a big part of the heart and soul of your program. Right. Uh, one of the things that was interesting is that the uh, the past summer, the summer right before this, was the first time that during the summer Jackson dedicated any time to basketball. Uh, when you're a kid who plays three sports, uh, everybody wants to pull you. Like uh, we joke around, like if it's, like I think it's 32 is the number of flex days. Once that goes into law approval, whatever the thing is, so uh, that would mean Jackson Ruest had three seasons and 96 possible days he could have a flex that. The time doesn't exist. Uh, we are pulling kids so many different directions. And so I talked to Matt Urish at length uh, about Jackson and baseball, and he got a small, an offer, but a, but a small financial offer from, from Fairmont. And I, I don't think that's the route he's going to go. I think he's going to play baseball, but I think it's going to be somewhere else. But, uh, you know, often I will make phone calls for kids. Like I, I, Ms. Van Dyne is our athletic director, and I would be the first one to tell you that I know less than nothing about volleyball. Uh, you know, I, I just don't. I know enough to teach it in PE class. Uh, not not enough for the the girls around here. The level of talent we have everywhere, but I I think I played a role in helping uh, her daughter go to Fairmont now to to play volleyball. Uh, if you have relationships with people and you call people and they they respect who you are, then sometimes they'll look when otherwise they might not have. And so, but in terms of Jackson, like he just he's a tremendous kid. He's a tremendous person, uh, and so he spent a little bit of time practicing basketball, just a little bit, and it made a big difference he got a lot better at basketball um he's very quiet guy too oh so unassuming he just you know he just goes and plays and likes playing sports and i was trying to encourage him to to you know, some basketball stuff opened up for him late, and I was trying to encourage him to go to somewhere where he maybe could play both, which he, he had that option at Mount Alto. Um, but I think he's going to go a different route. And I just was encouraging him to do that because, honestly, Jackson loves to play stuff so much. But what I just said is true. There's a big difference. When I was talking to Matt Yurish about him, he said, you know, how good do you think he can be? I said, well, I think the ceiling's pretty high. The problem is for Jackson is he plays three things, so he hasn't worked on anything. He just hasn't. And it's not a shot at him. He just didn't have the time. So uh, you're playing three sports, harder to dedicate real time to the weight room. I mean, just does it. So, I, you know, I, I think he's, uh, you know, forget all the athletic attributes. Like, you know, his freshman year, he played point guard on our freshman team. Uh, his, his senior year, he's the center playing in the state tournament. We really don't have a center, but uh, you know, just but 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 more importantly than all that, like he's the kid at school that there's not one. You can't find one teacher who would say one negative thing about him as a human being. His parents obviously have to be super proud, and and they should be. His parents, grandparents, everybody. I mean, he's a great kid, and uh, you know, wherever he goes and whatever he decides to do, uh, you know, I I. I He's got to decide he wants to go to college first. Uh, you know, I mean, he's he's uh, he's a very skilled kid at lots of different things. So whatever he does, I know his future will be bright. You mentioned earlier that you guys are with the flex days now having practice, and you've had all your starters now move on and graduate for the most part, and only a few guys remaining. Who are, I guess, some of the guys this year on your roster? Not only talk about them a little bit, but the uh, new guys a uh, part of your coaching staff as well for this upcoming season. Yeah, well, um, you know, we're, we're hoping that, uh, you know, again, we have to, you have to go through the school board and all those right. things have to be approved, but uh, you know, we believe that uh, Austin Carter who was uh, at Berkeley Springs with uh, Coach Brenniger, uh, you know, he's he's a, a very, very good basketball mind for us. It, it, it helps me because, you know, I, t- I say at camp all the time, I'm just the other side of 29, uh, but, but I'm pretty far away from 29, and so having a young guy who still really, really likes to work out with the kids uh, sometimes helps in terms of building a, another really, really good relationship with them. And so Austin's going to be with us. Um, I believe Tony Tinsman is, is hopefully going to join our staff, which is, uh, you know, he's a former player who, uh, you know, who has, has children. He's, he's coached in rec league and he's done different things, but uh, we believe he's going to join our staff as, as well. Uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, the, the 
pretty big name is Kyle Triggs. Uh, Kyle is, you know, uh, he's, he's, he's uh, you know, certainly if he was good enough to coach at Rutgers, we can probably work it out for him to come to Hedgesville High School if he's interested. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's one of those things like, like you know, Kyle grew up here. He, he I tried to help him when he was a, a, a younger person and he went on to be a manager at, at West Virginia. And, uh, you know, I, I know he's still very fond of lots of things about Martinsburg High School. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, you know, uh, Kyle Van Meter, who was with me, has now, he's moved on. Uh, and, and he and Ryan Miller are, you know, going to coach at Washington. I'm sure they're going to do great things. But uh, that doesn't mean that they still don't love Hedgesville High School. I'm sure there's part of Kyle that will always be, you know, part of his you know, love will be for Martinsburg High School, but you know, basketball-wise, uh, relationships matter, and building those relationships with people, and, and me reaching, I reached out to him, and, and I think he's excited about the opportunity to come work with us. And moving forward here, you mentioned that you haven't utilized the transfer portal yet. How is what is your understanding for what that is? Because we don't really understand what it is and how people are coming to different schools. Uh, I guess in a word, it's a poop show. I mean, I, I don't know what else to Thank say. Thank you for censoring yourself. Yeah, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, you know, like here's the deal. Everybody knows, like like Rob joked yesterday off the air. He's you know he said, well, you know what. Well, all it really does is is make all the stuff that everybody was doing before legal, and uh, th there is some truth to that. There's lots of people who have faked addresses. There's lots of people who've done lots of things to be able to go to different schools. Uh, you know, uh, when when Eli Gates and and Brett Gates were. Uh, they they redid the lines, and at that point they were acting like everybody was going to be really really strict about if you were you, you know you were going to have to move you're going to have to move and and Eric Gates is a tremendous person uh, Lisa his wife they're not the kind of people who were ever going to fudge anything uh, they spent thousands of thousands of dollars to move so that their kids could stay in Hedgesville's district uh, other people didn't have the the wherewithal to do that other people found different ways to do it whether it be to stay at Hedgesville go wherever you wanted to go. So now, I, I think the problem is, and, I, and, this, and please believe me, it's not a shot at you guys, but right now what we've done is we've created pageantry to it. We've created this, like kids have switched schools all the time. It's happened now, but you can do it legally. What I worry about is this. If, if, if Billy Smith calls Kelly Church or reaches out to me or his parents do, if he does, I'm going to tell him i got to talk to his parents before he comes to anything at our school. And then once he comes, I, I would meet with him. I'd meet with his family. Those things happen all the time. Uh, but, he, but he has to be registered in your school. He has to be there. I know now there are kids that are going to other schools' workouts. They're participating with other teams to see if they like it. I, you know, uh, in many cases, you have a Adults, I think that are uh, as much as you want to guard against it there's going to be adults that are going to try to influence where kids go to school and the honest fact of that most people that do that are doing that for their own benefit they're not doing it for the benefit of the child anybody who wants to transfer to Hedgesville I Cam Wilkes transfer I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like we never had kids that transferred uh, I never had a conversation with Cam before I knew he was coming Stefan transferred Stefan and Cam were great friends Kids recruit kids. That happens. Uh, but same thing until until he came in. And, and you know, it, it turns out now one of the things we're finding, and again, not a slight at another school at all, there's lots of kids that are going to the wrong school already that never filled out paperwork. So if a kid wants to come back, it's ironic that he has an address. This is in our district, and we never even knew it. So the thing that I worry about with all of it is this. If if, if you're a family and you make a decision that you want to change schools because you think a school is a better fit for your son, regardless of the reason, then I 100% would support it. The thing that I worry about is adults selling falsehoods, selling things that aren't true to kids. Uh, be because, again, like since I've been here, Martinsburg High School, far more athletes than anybody else. They just have. Um, number of Division I basketball players out of Martinsburg High School in the last 25 years. Two, Kevin Pinsago and Dante Grantham. They're the two. With that being said, uh, Mike Winicki at that point was the associate head coach at Clemson. He was in my first wedding. I'm not saying that Dante Grantham went to Clemson because Kelly Church talked to Mike Winicki. I know it didn't hurt when he called me, and I was honest with him about it. So I think if kids are switching schools because they're chasing an athletic scholarship, I think it's bad. 
I just do. Kids have changed schools forever. Certainly, hopefully, you know, we're going to monitor what adults do and they do what's right for kids. But kids are going to make their choices and they're going to switch schools now. It just, it just makes it difficult, especially if you're a coach. You, like you, you know, you spend uh, the kids' eighth grade year, ninth grade year, tenth grade year when you're working with them. 11th grade year, like we, you know, the, the Fleming kid just transferred from, from Martinsburg in football. I mean, that became the big one. Uh, you know, that, that's probably awful tough for the coaches at Martinsburg High School that work with the kid for, for three or four years, regardless of the reason why he switched. So makes it tough. Another player uh, transferred into uh, Hedgesville High School. He did play basketball at his previous school. Has, have you talked to him? Has he talked to you yet, I should say, or has he even transferred yet? Do uh, we know? To Gavin Young, Young yeah, Gavin, yeah, yeah, from yeah, about yeah. yeah, and there's, there's, I can promise you this. There's absolutely no tie to their assistant coaches coming, and and that, like uh, Chad Brinker and I are, are friends. We've been friends for a long, long time. Chad called me uh, in in regards to Austin coming with us, and Chad said, "Look, he lives near you. He works nights. There's no way that he can keep driving to Berkeley Springs every day. Can you do something that he really wants to? He's talked about you. We both talked about." It'd be a great learning experience for him to be on your staff. Um, that that conversation happened long before. Um, I think Gavin is more of a football player than he is a basketball player. Maybe I don't know. I haven't seen him play either one except for you know when we played Berkeley Springs in basketball and, and anything on tape. But yeah, I have talked to him once. Once he was enrolled in our school and everything else, I reached out to his dad. Um, you know, uh, try to, like always, try to develop a relationship. And he hasn't been coming to basketball stuff. It's one of the other things that happens is, like at our school, Matt and I, I think, work together pretty well. There's going to be kids that are football kids that play basketball, and there's going to be kids that are basketball kids that have aspiration of playing at whatever level. I think when we try to ask kids to do two and three things in one day, it's just too much. It becomes unhealthy. Uh, and I'm not just talking about, okay, they can't lift twice. I'm talking, if you if you come to one of our basketball workouts and we're there from 9 to 11.30 or, or sometimes 9 to 12, if you think you can do that and you can go do anything in the afternoon and be physically productive, then I'm not doing something right from 9 to 12. I mean, it's just, and it be, so it becomes, I think, detrimental to the kids and you end up with kids getting hurt. So, so we try to work together and um, Matt and I both open and honest with each other about, you know, we just want to know where the kids are. We don't, we don't want to let them like play mom against dad, dad against mom. We don't let them do that. But, you know, uh, you know, so, so we're, I'm excited that he's there. Supposedly he's pretty good at basketball. Uh, I know he plays AAU basketball and he's done some of that, but, but he, he actually hasn't been at anything yet. I think next week our football team's going to take a little bit of a break because they'll do, they'll use their flex days again in July. So I think next week we're going to come in and work out and hopefully some of those football kids will be with us for the first time. And, you know, you talk about the flex days this year. How much, how big is that for the guys that, that, uh, we're big on your JV team last year and, you know, guys that we see that are multiple sport athletes, maybe that time where they're able to carve out to play some basketball. Xavier Kirk, uh, you know, is the multiple sport athlete there, but the younger guy in uh, Quincy Pissnoggle, who's I'm assuming going to get a little bit more time at varsity this year. How big is the summer for them when you can come in and work with them? Well, it's, it's huge. Uh, you know, like um, both, both and, and I never even answered the one question you asked me about, like, the, you know, players, like obviously, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's there's a number of kids that everybody's fighting for. Well, who's going to get what spot? And we we tell them all the time, like there's no, you know, it's not promised anybody. Uh, Xavier Kirk's really really good. I mean, he's a pretty darn good basketball player, uh, and he's this summer he spent a lot more time working and focusing on basketball. Um, you know, uh, obviously Noah is a you know my stepson's he's he's a pretty good baseball player as well he's a starting shortstop in the state tournament and but only because the shortstop got hurt but uh but he was playing third and he started most of the year in baseball and and uh but he's like right now he's spending a lot of time he's also playing on the legion team so uh noah's doing a little bit of two things at once um you know landon pence is doing the same thing uh quincy's gotten a lot better uh you know one of the things that's hard for quincy is uh, no matter what, if you're you're a young man and you feel like no matter what, you're always playing in your dad's shadow, that's kind of tough. Uh, Quincy's a, a pretty good high school basketball player. Obviously, when you're that tall, uh, you have a small frame. Uh, you know, the physicality of it can, can play a role. So, uh, But no matter what, I know that Quincy will be able to play basketball. No matter what, I will be able to help him. After high school, he will have somewhere to go play, uh, which is kids that have that aspiration. I think that, that over the years we've shown we can, we can do that. Um, 
it, they have to buy in and do the things we ask them to do in the off season. Uh, so, you know, so we'll see who else, like who fills what spots. I mean, uh, you know, Zanning, Zanning Ganey is, uh, you know, a, a really athletic kid who's done well. And but we'll we'll have to have more kids. I mean, we'll have to figure out who it's who it's going to be. So uh, long way to go between now and then. Yet we have the summertime. You also have, like I said, eventually it'll be 32 flex days. I mean, I, I think what most people will run into is not they don't have enough time to work with kids to get better. But you got to figure out where you can do it because you're not going to have gym space and that becomes a problem. Yeah. All right. Well, th- we'll take a little break here when we come back. Uh, coach Church, you're going to stick around? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We're still joined by head coach for the Hedgesville Eagles basketball team, Kelly Church. And, and Coach, any uh, team camps your teams are going to this summer? I've seen a lot of other teams doing it, so I figured I'd ask your you. Yeah, we we, uh, we already did. We went to, to JMU, uh, and I've become, again, pretty close with some of their staff members. Uh, Matt, Matt Schultes, who's the director of basketball operations, is uh, he, my, my son Alex and he are, are pretty close. And so because of that relationship, I ended up getting another staff and, and Mac Butlin, Matt Buckland, who's actually Tom Izzo's nephew. Uh, they've got a couple mm-hmm. nephews. They, uh, uh, Coach Crimmins is there, and that's Bobby Crimmins' nephew. So they've they've got a couple big nephew connections. Uh, but so we, we started to to go there a couple years ago, right after COVID. University of Richmond, we we'd gone there forever, uh, and University of Richmond shut theirs down, and so uh, we go to JMU, and we, we do some things different. We try to go in a little early. Uh, we practice in their gym, um, you know, and and so. Uh, that's our, our big weekend. I wish it was later, but the way things work out now, uh, you almost have to do it right at the beginning of, of our three-week period. Um, and there's some other things going on that, that teams are going to, uh, which, I, you know, I think it's great as a coach. You're going to decide whatever whatever you think is best for your kids and your program. Like, uh, I know uh, I'm obviously very tight with George Gosk, who's the girls coach at, at Spring Mills. Last year, he had a, a veteran team, lots and lots of players. Obviously, everybody's gotten wind of the, well, some kids are gone now. They're not there. And so I think George has spent most of the three weeks just practicing, just trying to, like, work on skills and get better and try to figure out where he's at. So different teams, different years. We'll do some different things, um, you know, but but this year we went to JMU, and that'll be a pretty steady because the University of Richmond doesn't do theirs anymore. So we'll go to JMU's camp every year. And then, you know, last year we went to GW during this time, uh, and we actually joint practiced with uh, with Rick Green's team we're really really close um, and you know, uh, uh, it was. I think sometimes you get way, way more out of a, a joint practice than you will just going to shootouts. And like my philosophy again, and I may be different than other people. I know kids like to play games. Everybody likes to play games. In West Virginia, we argued and fought forever that we need to have more time with our kids. We need to be able to develop their skills and do those things to help them be better basketball players. And then you know, as things started to open up for us for the three week period, and then with some flex days, it seems like. Like most people just go play games as much as they can. So we'll worry about more of the team stuff and being able to play games and compete as the season gets closer right now. We're, we're really trying to focus on helping our kids become better basketball players. No Marshall team camp? Uh, no, it's a, I don't like it. It's a big drive. Well, yeah, and like... Uh, I mean, I, I, when I first got here, it's kind of an interesting story. Mr. Dillinger was the principal at Hedgesville High School, and it was my second year, and I asked him if we could go to New York City for a tournament. And he's like, you're, you're crazy. There, you don't need to travel to New York City. I said, well, it's not a need to. It's, a, I think, a big, great experience for the kids. They could see a different part of the world. Most of them haven't seen it. No, no, no. So, and, I, and I love Mr. Dillinger to this day. Like, we're, we're very close. Uh, certainly a, a father figure mentor towards me. Um, <laughs> I went into his office the next day, and I asked him if we could go to Charleston, West Virginia, to play in a tournament instead. And he said, absolutely great idea. <laughs> and so then I, I got out the old school compass, and I put it on a map, and I drew a circle. And I said, man, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but if, uh, if we can travel all the way to to Charleston or to Huntington. I don't know how you're not letting us go to New York. And then, (laughs) ironically, my my son, uh, the twins, uh, Alex, Went to went to Marshall. He was the head manager for four years. He went with CJ and uh, had a great career there. Went on to UAB to to be an assistant coach. And uh, uh, my son Adam went to the United States Merchant Marine Academy, which is 
you know, a, a hidden wonder of the world that not enough people know about. Like the, your life after you graduate from a school like that, um, the financial gains you can make, it's different than the other academies because you can work in the private industry as long as it's within the marine industry. And so, uh, but it's still a service academy. It's, you know, still one of the top educations you can get in the entire country. And so Adam went there and I, it was way easier to go see Adam in New York than it was to try to go see Alex in, in Huntington. So we, we don't we don't necessarily travel all that way, not that often. I know we only got yeah. a minute or two remaining here in today's show, unfortunately, but wanted to get your comments as uh, you were made aware earlier, I believe this week, actually, that you are uh, one of the few in this year's Hall of Fame class for Hedgesville High School. So congratulations on that honor, and uh, just wanted to get your comments on it as well. Well, uh, first of all, it's the same thing I said yesterday, and I, I appreciate you acknowledging it. It's... Uh, you know, one of the things for me is when, when I uh, when I first came here uh, 25 years ago, I had no idea. Every year there were the rumors that, uh, well, Coach Church is only here for a year, and then I'm only here for two, and then, well, he's leaving. He's le and, and I uh, raised my family here. I, I, I love it here. It's been, uh, it's been great. And, uh, you know, the fact that not being from Hedgesville and, and being able to, you know, eventually I was obviously this year, I'm part of the Hall of Fame class. Like, it's a, it's a huge honor. Uh, and uh, a ton of respect for, for all the people there. And Mr. Dillinger, who, who hired me all those years ago, we're still very close. And, um, you know, Tim Ballant, who I, who I co-taught with, is, is in the class as well. So that's, that's pretty neat to, to be in the class with somebody who I used to share a classroom with. Thanks for the time. This 30 minutes flew by, and uh, you're welcome back anytime you want to come on, Coach Church. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate you guys. All right, that'll do it for this edition of the Sports Mix. Thanks to Coach Church for coming on, for calling. I'm Spencer saying so long. We'll talk to you tonight for Little League Baseball Action.